Right. Now that we've covered the assets we will find in a firm's balance sheet, it is time to focus our attention on the liability side. Accounts payable are one of the most important items on the liability side. When a company buys raw materials for its production process, it registers the amount in accounts payable until the actual payment has been made. The firm owes its supplier an amount of money because it received the goods. Accounts payables includes payments owed to suppliers for other goods and services, not just raw materials. When we owe money for electric energy, IT support, or new equipment delivered recently, we'll include the money in this account. Another important type of liabilities are financial liabilities, which are a significant item for a lot of businesses out there. A financial liability appears on the balance sheet of a company when it receives external financing, which is usually a bank loan. The firm uses the funds to finance its operations and commits to repaying its lender. Another situation in which we will register an item as a financial liability is when we have an agreement with one supplier to repay them in a period that exceeds 180 days. Such payables shouldn't stay within trade payables, given this is more of a loan that's been given to us by the supplier. Usually, when an agreement like this happens between a company and one of its suppliers, the company pays interests for the money it owes the supplier. Hence, this represents a financial liability. Sometimes companies must pay taxes. Actually, they must do that almost always. This is a very complicated issue because we can have different types of taxes, such as income tax, value-added tax, regional or state tax, and so on. Each type of taxes could be due at different points of time, so we'll usually have an account on our balance sheet indicating how much money we owe the government. This is money we must pay in the short or in the long run, depending on the tax obligation. Provisions are another liability we will often find on a firm's balance sheet. This is money a company has set aside for future obligations. A provision represents a payment we expect to make at a certain point of time. An example of a situation when we must set aside a provision is when another firm sues us, and we can reasonably expect we must pay a certain amount when the trial ends or when it is settled. We said that the most important distinction that can be made about assets is whether they are current. Well, the situation is the same here. When we owe money, we are obviously interested if that's an obligation we must pay in the next 12 months or its payment can be postponed. Trade payables are a liability we should consider as current, as we discussed above. If we don't pay suppliers within six months, then this becomes a form of financing we've received. Financial liabilities, provisions, and tax liabilities are usually classified in two parts, current and non-current. Usually, the company will have a good idea what portion of these liabilities must be paid within 12 months and what portion can be postponed. Okay, great. We are almost done with the description of the main balance sheet items. In our next lesson, we'll have a practical exercise, and then we'll complete the puzzle with the one part that's been missing so far, shareholders' equity.